Today, I'm gonna to show you some creative and useful smart home automations that you can do with contact sensors. Stick around to the end of the video and I'll show you how I use my HomePod mini to alert me whenever the mail arrives. You've got mail. Oh, sweet. Let's jump in. These automations work with any contact sensor, but in this video, we'll be using the Vocalink VS1 contact sensor. This video is sponsored by Vocalink. They did send me out their VS1 contact sensor for this video, so let's check out what's in the box. Here we have the contact sensor itself, plus extra mountain stickers and the battery. Battery life can last you about six months, which is not as long as other HomeKit contact sensors that can last for at least a year or more. Replacing the battery on this thing can be a pain because you have to remove the sensor from the adhesive each time. A great fix for this is to put the adhesive on the back of the battery cover. Then when it's time to change the battery, you can just twist the sensor and the cover will, will come off and this makes replacing the batteries much easier. Easier. They connect via Bluetooth 5.0, which allows for very fast notifications. And it has a nice little green light indicating whenever it's open or closed. You will need a HomeKit hub like an Apple TV or a HomePod mini if you want to see the status of this sensor remotely and pray automations. Now let's look at some automations that you can do with this contact sensor. We'll start off with a basic automation. Whenever a door opens, a light turns on. Oftentimes in the morning, I'm fumbling around in the dark trying to find the the light switch but now whenever the door opens my light automatically comes on and whenever the door closes between a certain time then the light will turn off now my wife and i we have two little cute dogs and we actually used a contact sensor on their treat jar so we're each notified whenever we fed them a treat keep in mind if your container is round like mine is then your sensor will stick out a little bit and it won't be as flush but if you have a more of a flat surface like my dog food container is then it will sit more flush and it will lay more evenly. I would love to be able to figure out a way to be notified if we fed our dogs too many treats. So for example, if we've opened up the treat jar X number of times, then we can have the HomePod mini announce, Hey you, you've given the dogs five treats in one day. No more treats for the dogs. Sorry guys, no more treat treats. Siri said no. If you know how to do this and you're able to, to figure this out, leave me a comment down below and I'll pin your comment and I will also give you a shout out over on my Instagram page, Adam's Tech Life. When I put my clothes into the washing machine, I use a NFC tag to set a time around my phone that will alert me whenever the clothes are done washing. And with this next automation, I can be notified whenever the laundry is done drying. This automation does work best with dryers that have a flat dial and not a dial with a knob control. My dryer has a knob control, so sometimes the sensor can get in the way of turning the knob. Now, one of the cons with doing this is that it can block the numbers on the dryer, so you're not sure sure how long you're setting the dryer for. And the sensor may be too far away from each other to detect whenever it's open or closed. So now I can be notified whenever the clothes are done drying. Now on to my favorite automation, the one in the mailbox. You've got mail. Oh, sweet. This is done by uploading your own audio file into your Apple Music library. Make sure you have iCloud Sync Library turned on, then create a basic automation that triggers whenever the contact sensor is opened. Choose the audio to play, which HomePod and the volume to play it at. The Vocal Link contact sensor is rated for indoor use only, so use this at your own risk. There are outdoor rated contact sensors like the Ring Mailbox sensor, but I personally have not used those before. When you're installing the contact sensor in the mailbox, put the thin piece on the mailbox door so it's not as easy for the mail person to knock it off whenever they're putting in your mail. And you may need a different type of adhesive depending on what your mailbox is made out of. The adhesive in the box is pretty strong to support the contact sensor and worked well in my mailbox. You will also need strong Wi-Fi coverage for this to work. And it also depends on what your mailbox is made out of because metal mailboxes will kill the Wi-Fi signal. Let me know down in the comments below what some of your favorite automations are with contact sensors. And I will see you guys in the next one.